Questions to the Cabinet members and Chairman will now be taken until the 45-minute continuous period for questions and answers has ended. So, question number 25, Councillor Fairbrother. Question 25 to the Cabinet member. I thank uh, Councillor Fairbrother for the question, uh, from rucksacks to orange sacks. Um, <laughs> I, I think we can, uh, to elaborate a little bit on the written answer, uh, I think we know with, with uh, obviously with certainty how many of the, uh, the orange sacks we purchase in a year. Uh, we can also be uh, very sure um, being able to define precisely the volumes of the waste streams that go through the, uh, the material recovery facility at Smuggler's Way, um, how many of them are used properly, uh, and it's therefore uh, a fair bet that the, uh, the numbers here are pretty accurate. We're, we're getting on for six million bags that are used uh, inappropriately, not for what they're intended. Um, to, to look at uh, the evidence for, uh, for where, where they go, there's a, there's a rich seam of anecdotal misuse. Um, my favorite is a gentleman near Hastings who uh, sells uh, uh, horse manure from his farm gate and he uses our orange sack to package his product. Um, there is, uh, there, well, no longer. Uh, we've, we've dealt with that. Uh, gentlemen, too obvious. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, a laundry in Merton uh, that also makes copious uh, use of our sacks. Uh, and I, I, know of, uh, I know of educational establishments that are preparing uh, uh, items to be fired. I've seen this recently, uh, and they don't want the things to dry out, so they, uh, they wrap every single item in an orange sack, not what they were intended for. Um, in terms of volume, I mean, there are, and there are dozens more like that. Uh, in terms of volume, uh, anyone can look inside a bin that serves a high-rise estate. Uh, I've looked in lots, and there are always lots of orange sacks which are being inappropriately used. So I think there's no doubt that we've understood the problem. Um, turning to uh, the second part of the question, um, the, uh, the system already works well. We're building on that, uh, and I have every confidence that uh, what uh, residents will be offered from September will be a much better system, because instead of going to a library uh, and being disappointed, uh, they will be able to order them, and they will be delivered to their door. And I think that's going to be a big improvement. Councillor Fairman, um, I presume you want to ask a supplementary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank uh, Cabinet Member for his uh, uh, answer and to the assurances given. Um, I think we still have some uh, question marks on this side as to how the whole arrangement is going to work. Just, just one or two aspects we're a little bit uh, not yet wholly convinced. Um, but my main reason was ask, uh, asking the question was the telephone request side because I'm aware some residents seem to still find that system from time to time difficult to get hold of. So I, I was just wanting the assurance that while we haven't got the online system, the telephone system will be the V's knees. Thank you. Uh, I thank the councillor for the supplementary. I'm very happy to give him assurance that I, I, will, uh, I will make sure it's as good as it possibly can be. Uh, my understanding is that uh, that's pretty much the case already, but I'm very happy to uh, give him my assurance. Councillor Hallmark. Uh, I'm delighted that they're looking at uh, doing an online ordering service. Uh, that wasn't something we talked about in the OSC. Given the demographics of the borough, I think it would be very useful. Uh, in his role as deputy leader, can he commit to talking to his colleagues to see what other council services can be done online? Uh, I thank the councillor for, for the question. Um, well, that process is, uh, is very much underway. Um, a major part of uh, the savings that uh, we have to make uh, can be made through uh, shifting as many services possible as possible uh, online, making them more efficient. Uh, it often also means that it fits very well with the demographic of the borough, and it's an awful lot easier for people, as well as being cheaper for this council. Uh, and there are dozens and dozens of examples, and uh, if I may, I think uh, my, one of my questions later touches on it as well. Uh, yeah, the way we all communicate is, is changing very, very rapidly, and it is clearly highly appropriate that we do that. Very happy to give that assurance. Councillor Caddy. Question 26 to the, member, to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Thank you, um, I, Mr. Anth I thank the Councillor for um, the question. Um, the answer is as written, and um, 
it does point out that there will be some real challenges in delivering this um, uh, and uh, we will of course be working on those um, not least of uh, which will be actually identifying the uh, 1,400 most deprived uh, youngsters in the borough um, as people will know um, very often it's the um, those that are perhaps somewhat least deprived that know about these facilities and tend to jump in first. So um, there is a, quite a, a big logistical problem in finding the places as well as administrating uh, this proposal. Councillor Caddy. Could the Cabinet member confirm that appropriate consultation will take place to seek the ideas of a variety of stakeholders on how they can contribute to the provision of this entitlement for two-year-olds? Um, thank the Councillor for her supplementary. Um, yes, in fact, uh, we, ha we already have an early years partnership in Wandsworth, which is excellently chaired by uh, Councillor Sutters, uh, my deputy. And um, she, uh, through the committee, we, it is a committee to consult with all the different providers in the borough. So the schools are represented, parents are represented, the private sector is represented, the voluntary sector is represented childminders, etc. Um, and since Councillor Sutters has been um, chairing it, I have to tell you the numbers attending have increased, so we've had to change the venue. Um, it is a very good consultative body for consulting with the experts. So, um, yes, indeed, a lot of consultation has gone on and will continue to do so. Second supplementary. Councillor Osborne. Uh, can I um, thank the Cabinet member for her answer? Um, and with her permission, uh, say that we welcome this initiative. And one other thing, with the permission of the Mayor as well, um, welcome Councillor Caddy to this Council Chamber. Welcome aboard, Councillor Caddy. Thank you for that nice touch, Councillor Osborne. Did you want to respond to that, Mrs Tracy? Then we shall go for Councillor Boswell. Question 27 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Thank the Councillor for her question. Of course I should have uh, welcomed Councillor Caddy. On this side we've seen a lot of Councillor Caddy uh, since she was elected. And um, I actually hadn't realised that uh, it was her, it's not her first Council meeting, but the first time she's spoken in the Chamber. Um, thank you Councillor Boswell. The question is as answered. Um, and probably I need to wait for the supplementary, which I, I, <laughs> I think I can anticipate. Um, but uh, uh, the equipment is as listed in the answer. Supplementary, Mr Mayor. Councillor Boswell. Uh, thank you very much for your written answer. Um, there has been some confusion about the uh, Adventure Play equipment um, at York Gardens Library. Uh, sorry, York Gardens Adventure Playground. Um, and I think you previously stated that there was just a zip wire there. But of course, as, as we can now see from this written answer, there is a range of equipment there. It's all living, organic uh, play structures, and they're self self build um, tree houses and rope swings and climbing walls. And it's a very great shame that they are going to be replaced with catalogue bought um, adventure play equipment. I would just like to ask, um, when was the last time the cabinet member visited York Gardens Adventure Playground? Um, I thank the uh, member. In fact, um, I realise that, um, well, a very um, regular, actually the person in question did come in a deputation to committee and has um, since suggested that at committee I talked about there only being a zip wire at uh, York Gardens. And um, I've asked my colleagues whether this was true or not, um, and certainly the Labour members didn't pick it up at the time. Um, and if I did, I apologise because I was talking about Kimber Road Adventure Playground and I don't believe I did get it wrong because I seem to recall the person in question actually saying, well, I don't know about Kimber Road because I've been much more involved with York Gardens. So I don't actually believe I said it and I visited York Gardens, um, was it this Monday or Monday before, but within the last two weeks. Second supplementary. Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wonder if the Cabinet Member would sh um, share with me my um, concern that the investment that is going into um, York Gardens Adventure Playground area and into Kimber Road, etc., is very rarely welcomed by members of the uh, minority party. And could she also explain 
what in fact will be at York Gardens after that investment and how it will address the issues and the needs of the people of that community. Uh, thank, thank the uh, member for the supplementary. Um, yes, of course, uh, members opposite are forgetting that we've had an extensive consultation on this and it is the uh, young families on the York Gardens estate who actually um, voted um, in favour predominantly of actually having some facilities, um, open play facilities for the under fives. So the adventure playground will be um, uh, the actual equipment that is there at the moment will be demolished and will be replaced and um, architecturally, if that's the right word, um, landscaped and brought into the larger playground, which is an over eights playground, so that there will be a continuous, very large, very nice playground from naught to 16. Councillor Mrs Stokes. Question 28 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Um, I thank the member um, for the question. Of course, this is quite pertinent to a lot of the members um, who may have had representations from um, people who didn't get their first choice in primary schools. It's quite a long and extensive answer. Um, and uh, you will see from that um, that we do still actually have places available in the borough at um, several schools. And I believe um, it changes every uh, uh, day. Um, but as of today, we are probably just in double figures of those who actually are still looking for a place. But there are enough places to cover them should they choose those schools. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Mrs. Stokes. I thank the Cabinet Member for her uh, very full answer, both written and oral. Is she confident, though, that with the current proposals for enlarging primary schools in the west of the borough, and when the new primary school is built on the Putney Hospital site, the competition for places in this part of the borough will be greatly eased? Um, I thank the Councillor for the supplementary, um, and actually for the... Um, terminology because greatly eased rather than eradicated uh, is uh, I'm much more comfortable with. Of course um, the expansion of the schools at the Sacred Heart and Grand Arbor have both expanded and the new um, two form entry school on the Putney Hospital site will indeed um, relieve a lot of pressure at this end of the borough. This end of the borough um, has um, a plethora of outstanding schools and I think um, we're never going to be able to satisfy um, first choices um, f at those schools because they're always going to be popular um, but hopefully with the um, Putney Hospital um, site coming into use as well those living nearest to those schools will be able to find an outstanding school for their children. Second supplementary. Councillor Speck. Yep. Again, in, in light of the growing demand for uh, primary school places, uh, what reassurances can get the council offer right across for concerned parents in terms of future provision for places? Because I know that we're just talking about this September, but it's something we've got to look at very closely. Thank the councillor for the supplementary. Um, and as you'll see from my written answer, there is still um, predominantly um, places in Battersea, and we believe that... Um, will continue until um, uh, the Nine Elms site with its new school comes on um, stream. Um, the pressure points after the Putney Hospital site um, are most definitely in um, Tooting and um, we're hoping to hear actually this week whether the Secretary of State has agreed um, our two-form entry which could possibly be a three-form entry school on the Professional Centre site. Um, if that isn't um, uh, granted then we will have to go back to some of those schools in Tooting who actually are not as keen as schools in the rest of the borough to expand because we um, will get to the uh, stage in the next couple of years where the birth rate in Tooting is catching up with the rest of the borough. Uh, in view of the absence of the cabinet member for adult care and health the leader will answer the next question Councillor Thomas. Question 29 to the leader. Um, I thank Councillor Thomas for his um, question and I refer him to the written answer here and just to add Mr Mayor that I'm sure the whole council would want to wish Councillor Madden a speedy recovery. 
indeed. Councillor Thomas. I thank the uh, leader for uh, his uh, answer. Um, I note the answer is slightly differently worded uh, to my actual question, because it refers to the number of service uh, users that the cabinet member uh, is uh, aware of. Um, and uh, actually, I think understanding what the uh, impact of the uh, service charge changes has been uh, uh, right across uh, the borough um, and uh, tracking it uh, you know, across all of the service users who were using those services is really important to understand the outcome. So I understand that the uh, time between the submission of this uh, question and uh, tonight uh, may have been quite a short period to come up with the uh, full figures I was asking for, but could I ask uh, the leader for a, a, a commitment to uh, actually uh, uh, do a comprehensive audit to provide uh, the figures uh, requested in uh, Part B here as part of a, uh, a comprehensive evaluation of the outcomes uh, of the new charging policy on uh, residents' uh, health and well-being? I thank Councillor Thomas for his supplementary. Um, as, the, as the written answer says, the charging policy was only introduced in uh, October 2011, so it's not an awful long time. Um, perhaps um, he, he's a little unfair to, that this answer is written on, on terms of only what Councillor Madden knows. It is actually in terms of what the department knows. And of course, the department will continue to collect figures, and as these develop, I, I'm sure he'd be happy to share them with Councillor Thomas. Can supplementary. Councillor Mrs McDermott. Thank you. Um, does the leader realise that in fact the vast majority of um, adult care users feel very positive about the different ways they can actually pay for their services? They use words such as empowering and out of the dark ages. And um, doesn't he agree that actually Councillor Thomas has very low expectations of how adult care users can use imagination and um, independence to find alternative ways if they wish to or even to use the council services in a different way and it's giving them far more scope for that. I thank Councillor McDermott for her, her supplementary. I think she, the use of the word empowerment is so, so very right. I, I have, uh, as a member of a family, responsibility for my elderly father who feels hugely empowered with the choices he now has rather than one-size-fits-all type of service delivery. And I think there are an awful lot of people who find that this is, this is a, a way they're always used to living, making their own choices. This allows them to continue to live making their own choices. And of course there will be those who can't and the service will manage those too. On the point of personal explanation, Mr. Mayor. I thought there was one. Can I just uh, clarify that I've uh, never said anything to suggest that uh, um, I'm against uh, uh, individuals uh, making choices in an empowered uh, uh, way, um, or that I have low expectations of uh, service users. So I, I don't know where Councillor McDonald's got that idea from, but uh, I'd like to put on record that is precisely not my view. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mrs Strickland. Question number 30 to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety. I thank uh, Councillor Strickland for, for the question. Uh, I am very grateful to have the opportunity to, uh, to set the record straight on this very important topic. I, I do utterly deplore uh, some recent publicity. I uh, don't like holding this in my hand. Uh, the headline, Conservatives forcing closure of Battersea Police Station, uh, went around two wards uh, in the borough. Um, there is absolutely no basis in fact. Uh, it will have caused totally unnecessary uh, concern and anxiety, I think particularly of uh, more vulnerable members of the community who will have seen that and recoiled. Uh, I do think it is deeply irresponsible to be making those sorts of statements uh, when there is just absolutely no uh, basis on which to make them. Uh, and the borough commander on the 15th of June sent an email to all members making that very, very clear. Um, on the contrary, instead of that uh, very black inaccurate picture which has been painted there. Uh, we do in fact have a new police facility in the borough uh, with the opening on the 2nd of July of a new custody facility uh, with uh, 30 cells uh, at uh, the back of Wandsworth Police Station, uh, which is a major efficiency gain because it allows the police to uh, carry out uh, investigations all in one location which previously was spread across the borough which was infuriatingly inefficient. So in fact we are making progress with the police estate in the borough uh, and that is the reality of the situation. 
so I think that one's very clear. Um, moving to, uh, to front desks, there is a London-wide review underway. As yet, no uh, proposals have emerged from it, uh, but as my, uh, my colleague's question earlier uh, alluded to, of course, we are all communicating in different ways. The police, uh, I commend the progress they've made in the last year. Uh, they admit they had a shock last August uh, about uh, the, the way that in which they were unable to communicate with some elements of the community. Um, things have changed very, very quickly. There's some very positive developments in neighborhood policing. Um, they have made commitments to uh, contact any victim of crime uh, very quickly. Um, they are communicating in all sorts of different ways. So it is only natural uh, in the current uh, public spending uh, environment that they examine whether or not they are doing things in the most efficient way. Uh, and there is, for example, a police station, not in this borough, that only gets uh, five front desk visits per week. That is clearly crazy in the current, uh, the current environment. So, uh, so no firm proposals yet, but I very much support what the police are doing uh, in reviewing uh, the way they communicate with uh, the community. Councillor Mrs Strickland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cabinet Member, for your answer. It's really just endorsing what you've said. I'd just like to say that um, while we do understand post the Olympics, the Met will be required to seek some economies, uh, it's extraordinarily unhelpful and bad for public relations to make alarmist predictions and that Wandsworth and the Borough Commander will always keep up the pressure to maintain the best pu police provision possible. And the examples you've just given uh, do reassure us of that. So thank you very much. I thank the Council for that, uh, that, that supplementary uh, question and comment. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I know the Borough Commander is, uh, of course, uh, his primary concern is what is best for Wandsworth, uh, as is mine, and I'm sure all of the members here. Uh, and I, I just uh, I can't emphasize enough uh, how unhelpful this sort of thing is. Uh, and, and also, it does not help the police do their job, uh, because they, they, they now have a task to uh, set the record straight, which they can do without. Uh, they're busy enough. The time for questions... Supplementary, I tried to jump the gun there. Councillor Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Leone Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, would it surprise the Cabinet member to hear that the uh, misinformation came from the police themselves? It came from uh, the staff at the Battersea Police Station, the uh, so-called back office staff, who informed uh, people visiting the station that, it was, uh, that their jobs were under threat and that the counter might be closed. It came from a meeting of the St Mary Park Safe and Neighbourhood team. And finally, the letter that was circulated on the email from the borough commander on the 15th of June is a pen to obfuscation and is completely responsible for further deepening the rumours about the closure of stations. Finally, you yourself have just uh, heightened those rumours by suggesting that police stations where there's only five callers a week, um, that the police are doing a good job to, re to consider closing them. So, you know, what, what on earth is this nonsense about a, a custody suite elsewhere? How is that going to help? How is that going to help people in Battersea once their police, once their front desk is closed? These rumours are coming from the police. Answer that. Uh, well, I thank the councillor for, for the uh, supplementary speech. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I would have a recommendation. If you want to find out what's going on, ask the borough commander. Uh, that's what I do. I talk to him. Uh, you'll get the facts. Um, all sorts of rumours spread throughout large organisations. We all know that, uh, so I think that, that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, there were various points there. Um, my main point in mentioning a, another police station which has very, very few visitors is to underline that in the current environment, all publicly funded organisations must examine all aspects of how they operate and operate most efficiently, uh, as efficiently as they possibly can, and respond to the changing environment, particularly when it comes to communication. I did not say that. I absolutely did not say that. It rather reminds me of the nonsense around the Parks Police, uh, the Parks Police debate, where you just could not bring yourselves to accept any degree of change and evolution. Uh, I think you fear change. I think I'm, af I'm afraid I've forgotten the, uh, the. You had some points in the middle. You'll have to remind me. Point of personal explanation. On a point of personal explanation to do with the Parks Police and the um, misinformation being spread by the Cabinet Member, I voted in committee, I can't remember if he was the Cabinet Member at that time, for a reduction in both the dog team and the Parks Police prior, I think, in fact, to him becoming in that role. And I'm sure Councillor McDermott, who doesn't suffer from memory loss, in fact, spends all her time looking in minutes to see who turns up to meetings. I'm sure she can confirm that to Councillor. Oh, 
and the time for questions is now up.